What's up guys, my name is Dan Vega, and if you're new to this channel, I run the website danvega.dev. If you want to head over there, you can find a bunch of really great articles on a wide variety of topics. You can sign up for my newsletter right on the homepage. My newsletter, Coffee and Code, goes out every Sunday, and it's just a little bit about what I've been up to and what I found cool around the web. So if you get a chance, sign up for that. I also have some courses, so you can check out the courses link up there. But with that, let's move on to today's tutorial. Today we're talking about using Visual Studio Code to create Spring Boot applications. So I've been working a lot more on the front end over the last year or two, and uh, as much as I love IntelliJ, I'm just more comfortable in Visual Studio Code, and I don't like going back and forth. So I don't like having like my, my, my view projects open in Visual Studio and then going over to IntelliJ to use uh, Spring Boot in Java. Um, so I've been using Visual Studio Code for a lot more development these days. I've been working with uh, Java and Spring and C Sharp and now Go. And so I'm using Visual Studio Code more and more and more. And I'm just, because I'm in it more, I'm more comfortable with it. Now, um, this is not to say to go out and replace whatever IDE you're used to. So if you really like Eclipse and you really like IntelliJ IDEA, they're both fantastic IDEs. I'm not saying get rid of them. I'm just saying if you happen to work on projects like this, where you might have a front-end application and a back-end application, and you're just used to using Visual Studio Code, you can do so. So I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but there are some really good extensions for Visual Studio Code. We'll do another video if you want on really like Java specific stuff, but in this one, I'm gonna focus in on Spring Boot. So we're gonna go through the demo first, and then I'll show you all the extensions I have installed because it's not gonna make sense until we actually go through and do some things. So I have this folder here called View Boot, and we're gonna create a Spring Boot app, we're gonna create a View app, and just have them talk to each other real quickly. Nothing really exciting, but I just wanted to walk through it. So now I know with Spring Boot, there are some, especially like Spring Boot and View and React and Angular, there are some tutorials out there that walk you through creating like a Maven multi-module project. And that may work, but I like keeping these separate, so I'm just gonna create a front-end project, a back-end project, and they'll actually both start up separately. So the first thing that we're gonna do is create our Spring Boot project. And to do so here in Visual Studio Code, I'm on a Mac, you're on a Windows, that might be a little bit different, um, but I'm gonna hit Command-Shift-P to open up my uh, command pod here. And if you start typing Spring, once you have the plug, the extension installed, which we'll go over in a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and, and go Spring Initializer, generate a Maven project. So what this will allow me to do is to go ahead and select a language. So I'm gonna say Java, I'm going to give it a um, package. So I'm gonna say, or a group ID. So we're gonna say com Vega, And I'm actually gonna call this one just the backend so I can kind of separate them. So I'm gonna backend project and a frontend project. So now we ask what type, uh, what Spring Boot version do you wanna use? I'm gonna use the latest. And now here's where you can go ahead and select your dependencies. So all I really want to get started is I wanna get dev tools. So as I, uh, as I enter down, as I like uh, use my arrow to get down to Spring Boot dev tools, I'm just gonna hit enter and you'll see that little check mark next to it. That means that it has been selected. So I'm gonna use that in Spring Web and that is it. And once your dependencies are selected, you can go ahead and hit enter. So now it's gonna say, all right, where do you want to create this? And this is the important part. So this says generate into this folder. So that means I have a folder called view boot on my desk and it's saying generate into this folder. So remember our um, project name was backend. So it's going to generate a folder called backend into this folder which is exactly what I want. And I'm already in this folder, so I don't need to reopen this, but if you if you opened it, if you generated that into like a, a folder that was somewhere else, then Visual Studio Code will allow you to kind of just reopen it right with that, right, right in that workspace. So now I have a backend folder, and this is just a, a normal Spring Boot application. So you can see that I have this Palm XML, and we have our dependencies that we selected. And what I can do is actually go into source, main, Java, and then demo application, 
Or I can come up here and hit Command P and start typing, and there's my demo application. So once you get familiar with Visual Studio Code, it's really easy to get around to different files, especially when you're working like in 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 a project like the one I'm going to be working in, where I have a backend application and a front end application. I know what these files are. I can quickly navigate around to them. So now that we're in our demo application, there's a couple ways to run it. Again, we're going to go over these extensions in a minute. I just want to kind of show you how to get up and running. You can come in and run right from here. There's also this Spring Boot dashboard, which will show you any of your projects. And you can come in and actually right click and go ahead and start. And you can run in debug mode and a bunch of other things. I'm actually just going to run it right from here. And you're going to see it's going to start up real quickly for me. Um, just a base application on port 8080. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I know that like my, um, actually, let's go over to the browser real quick and go to localhost 8080. And we're going to see that we are going to be greeted with this nice error page. And that is because we don't have any request mappings for uh, the root context. So one thing that I know is I know that 8080 uh, is usually by default what my view apps run on. So I'm going to go ahead and change the port that Spring Boot runs on. And so the nice thing here is in our application.properties, we, um, we get some assistance from Visual Studio Code on what properties we can go ahead and enter. So if I start typing server and I start typing port, we see that we get some help here. So server HTTP, HTTP port. And the default is 8080. So I'm going to actually change this to 8085. And 8085 has a special meaning in my heart. If you happen to know what default port 8085 used to use or an application server used to use, then comment below. Um, only some old scores will know that one. But anyway, so now if we look down here, our Spring Boot application is running on 8085. So we're going to do one thing here. We're going to come in here and we're going to add a new um, controller. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a home controller.java. And as I type package out, it's going to kind of help me out so it knows what package I'm in. And I'm going to create a new class called home controller. And that'll give us what we need. And this is going to be a REST controller. So I'm going to type REST controller and I'm going to get some help. Um, so that's really nice. It, gets, uh, it gives me some IntelliSense and it also gives me some documentation on what I'm actually looking for. So this is going to be a REST controller and we are going to hit it from a different uh, URL. So I want to go ahead and put that cross origin on there so we don't have a cores issue. And as I come down here, I can just start to type code, start coding right away. Now there are some snippets in some of these. So if I wanted to do a request mapping, um, you'll see I get a couple in there. So there's a request mapping. There's also a snippet for doing request mapping that doesn't seem to be coming up. But what I'm going to do is a get mapping anyway. So I'm going to say get mapping. And that's just going to be to slash. And we're going to create a method called home. And it's going to return a string, hello from Spring Boot. And you'll see that this is reloading very fast. Um, so we had one of those dependencies that we selected was the Spring Boot dev tools. Now, I know one thing, like I've kind of set uh, even the community edition up for students before. And you have to go in and kind of tinker with the dev tools in IntelliJ um, to get to get a uh, automatic reload like working right away and it just works right out of the box here in Visual Studio Code which I really appreciate. And you'll see it's very fast. So as we change things we kind of get that instant reload and if we go back to the browser and we reload this we should see hello oh run around port. So let's go there and hello from Spring Boot. Okay, so that's all I want to show from the Spring Boot side. And the Spring Boot app is running, so I'm going to leave this where it is. What I'm going to do is go ahead and hit a plus here and get a new terminal open. And what we're going to do is we are in here. Yep. So what we're going to do is use view command line, um, the CLI, to create a new application. So I'm going to say view create, and we'll just call this front end because that's going to be our front end application. And we're just going to have a standard project. So it's going to, again, if you're not familiar with Vue, don't worry about this. We're just creating a front end project. 
Uh, I will go ahead and link a um, video that I've done on the Vue CLI. So if you're kind of new to Vue, I have a bunch of content on Vue as well. Um, really great front end uh, JavaScript framework. So I will link the um, a couple of videos below if you want to take a look at that. Um, would you like to add? Oh yes, please add that to that. Okay, so looks like it's going and it's done. Project, it has things like um, Vuex and Vue Router, uh, but don't worry about any of that. All we care about is in this Views folder, there is a home view, and this is what is displayed on the home page. So we're going to get rid of kind of the stuff that was created for us. We don't need any of it. And all we're going to do is we're going to add a new data property here. Uh, so we're going to add a function. This function returns an object. And inside of here, we're going to display a message. And that message is going to be here. And we'll say message. Actually, let's call this title. It seems a little bit more appropriate. And so what we want to do is what we want to do is we want to reach out to our backend application grab that data from the controller, which is just text at this point, and display it on our page. So here we are. I'm going to use the mounted lifecycle hook. And inside of mounted, we're going to call it to our backend. So we're going to use the fetch API. And inside of this, we're just going to say, um, remember, our port is 8085 this time. So 8085. And when we get that back, uh, that's going to return a promise. We're going to get a response response and when that comes back we're going to actually get the text out of that response again we're not returning json from the back end it's just a simple string if we created an object uh, jackson would marshal that for us into some json and we can kind of get the json out of that if we needed to but in this case we just need the text so once that text comes back um, we're going to get the data and all we're going to do here is we're going to say this dot title is equal to whatever that data is. So that looks pretty good. So now again, we have two processes going here. We have a, a Java console and we're here in Bash. So now if I look in here, I'm going to go into my front end application and I'm going to go ahead and then run npm run serve. So this will kick up our front end application, which when we hit the home page, should go ahead and call out to our back end service, get some text and then set the title to remember it was hello from Spring Boot. So let's go back to the browser and let's go to 8081, nope, 8080, sorry. Here's our home page and here's our hello from Spring Boot. So again, if we look at this in the council here, we should see here is the call to localhost 8085. It's a get. We got a 200 response, and we got back the text, hello from Spring Boot. Now, if you were following along and that's not working, one of the things I mentioned before is you do need to add a cross-origin uh, annotation to the home controller. Otherwise, cores error will come up, and that's something that you'll often hit. So that was that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the front end. If we go over to the back end, we can also stop that. So that was that. And I want to do is show you the extensions that I was using to kind of create this application. So if we go into extensions, you can actually look at show installed ex extensions. So basically two things we want to look at. From the Java side, um, there's a Java extension pack, which gives you a lot of this stuff, like the debugger, the uh, test runner. Um, there's Maven for Java, which I like. And then let's get into the Spring side, which is the important stuff here. So there's a Spring Boot extension pack, which if you look at this, is really gives you a whole bunch of other extensions. So anytime you see an extension pack, it's really just a collection of extensions. And for this case, it's um, for all the Spring Boot stuff. And this was released by Pivotal. And so you get that Spring Boot dashboard. So that was that down here when you wanted to go ahead and see what applications you have and go ahead and start and stop and debug from there. That's that one. The Spring Initializer is what allows us to go ahead and add a new Spring Initializer project right within Visual Studio Code. So that's an important one. And if you don't know what these do or what their options are, you can always come in here and look at the details 
for each of these extensions. Um, so you look at this feature list, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Um, how to install it, how to use it, uh, more configuration. Um, so th there's some really good stuff in here that you should go ahead and, and look at after you do a few projects. And then there's Spring Boot Tools, so VS Code Language Server for Spring Boot Tools. This is really what gave us that insight in application.properties or a .yaml file, and even in the Java files. So uh, and then there's obviously ways to kind of uh, customize this. And then there's so much more. Like we, we should probably spend a whole other video on just how to kind of get around Spring Boot projects within VS Code. Because you can do things like navigate to spring specific elements within your source code. Um, there's just a whole bunch of things that you can do that we're not going to cover in this one. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, being able to set up your uh, Spring Boot project right here in Visual Studio Code without the need for anything else. And really being able to have both your front end and your back end code right within the same project is really, really nice because it keeps you working in a consistent environment. So I think that's all for today. If you enjoyed this content, if you liked it, please give me that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave me some feedback below. As always, friends, happy coding.